Hello and welcome to Baiju's exam prep IAS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Let's look into the first question. Consider the following statements with respect to contempt of court. The Attorney General's consent is mandatory when a private citizen wants to initiate a case of contempt of court against a person. The Contempt of Court Act of 1971 has a limitation period of two years for bringing in action against an individual. Supreme Court has the power to initiate contempt cases on its own, independent of the motion brought before it by the AG or with the consent of the AG. How many of the above statements are correct? The answer to this is only two statements. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Indian Express makes a reference to contempt of court. Let us try and understand what are these statements. When you look into the first statement, the Attorney General's consent is mandatory when a private citizen wants to initiate a case of contempt of court against a person. What do we understand by this? Let's say for example, the court has issued an order and it has asked a party to execute this particular order. But this person does not execute. So another party or an other individual will complain that the so and so party has not executed this particular order. So can it file a contempt of court proceedings directly? No. So a party may come up with this particular issue and this issue will go before the Advocate General or the Attorney General. Advocate General in case of a state, Attorney General in case of the center. So all these cases where another party says that so and so party has violated and has not listened to the court orders and has contempt of court in that case, it goes before the Attorney General. Only if the Attorney General approves, that is when contempt of court proceedings will be initiated. Which means a party may complain about another party. An individual can complain about another individual. But only if it is accepted by the Attorney General at the central level, Advocate General at the state level. That is when contempt of court proceedings can be initiated. Why is this added? That is because a lot of frivolous cases can also come up before the court. If so and so case comes before the court, it is actually leading to a lot of wastage of time. So in order to prevent this wastage of time and to make sure that court productivity is taken into picture, the AG is acting as the filter, which means only those which require introspection will be taken up and the rest will not be taken up by the court of law to initiate the contempt proceedings. So the first statement is right. The Contempt of Court Act of 1971 has a limitation period of two years. This statement is wrong. Why? Because the limitation period is one year and it is not two years. So second statement is wrong. When you consider the third statement, Supreme Court has the power to initiate contempt cases on its own, which means it would be able to take sure motor cognizance. So it need not have to wait for the AG. It need not have to wait for the consent of the Attorney General. But in case it feels that someone has violated, contempt proceedings can be taken up sure motor by the Supreme Court. So the third statement is also right. So looking at the first and the third statement, they are right. Second statement is wrong. So the answer to this would be only two two statements are correct. Now let's look into the next practice question. Which of the following statements is incorrect with respect to Chambal River? It is a tributary of the Yamuna River. It originates at Janapau south of Mountain near Manpur Indore on the south slope of Vindhya Range in Madhya Pradesh. It flows through three Indian states. Banas, Mej and Parbati are the left bank tributaries of Chambal. Which of the statements are incorrect with respect to Chambal River? The answer to this is Banas, Mej and Parbati are the left bank tributaries of Chambal. This is the wrong statement. Why? That is because when you look into the last statement, yes, Banas and Maj happens to be the left bank tributaries. But when it comes to Parbati, it is not left bank, but it happens to be right bank tributary of Chambal, which is why this particular statement happens to be an incorrect statement. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Indian Express makes a reference to Chambal River. Which is why we have taken this practice question. When we speak about Chambal River, it happens to be one of the tributaries of the Yamuna River. It thus forms the part of the drainage system of Ganges 
and this river flows to three Indian states, which are these states. One, what we have is Rajasthan. Second, what we have is Madhya Pradesh. Third, what we have is Uttar Pradesh. It flows through three states, which include Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh. Yes, it does originate at Janapav and this is along the south slope of India range in Madhya Pradesh. Second statement is also right. And as part of the assignment, you have to put on the comment section, which are the other right bank tributaries of Chambal River. When we speak about Chambal River, there are a number of dams that are constructed on this particular river. What we have is the Gandhi Sagar Dam. We also have the Rana Pratap Sagar Dam. We also have Jawahar Sagar Dam. Then there is another barrage that is also constructed. Which is it? Please put it on the comment section. Then we have the National Chambal Sanctuary and this is located along the river on the tri-junction of Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh. And this river is also known for critically endangered garial it is also known for endangered ganges river dolphin as well these are some of the important facts with respect to the chambal river now let's look into the next practice question consider the following statements with respect to insolvency and bankruptcy code of 2016 the indian institute of corporate affairs has regulatory oversight over the insolvency professionals a competitor of the corporate data is prohibited to submit a resolution plan in a corporate insolvency resolution process a creditor can initiate prepackaged insolvency resolution process when the debtor company has defaulted at least rupees 1 crore how many of the above statements are correct the answer to this is none. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Indian Express makes a reference to insolvency and bankruptcy code, which is why we have taken this practice question. Let us try and understand what are these statements. When you look into the first statement, the Indian Institute of Corporate Affairs has regulatory oversight over the insolvency professionals. This happens to be a wrong statement. Why? That is because it is the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board of India which has regulatory oversight over the insolvency professionals. This insolvency and bankruptcy board of India happens to be one of the key pillars of the implementation of the code. So the first statement is wrong. When you look into the second statement, a competitor of the corporate data is prohibited to submit a resolution plan. This statement is wrong. A competitor would be able to initiate this, but a willful defaulter would not be able to do so. So a willful defaulter is prohibited to submit a resolution plan in a corporate insolvency resolution process. So second statement is also wrong. Third statement reads, a creditor can initiate pre-packaged insolvency resolution process when the debtor company has defaulted at least rupees 1 crore. It is speaking about at least. So when it is the least, the amount that will go into the picture is not 1 crore, but it happens to be 10 lakhs. So all the three statements that are given here are wrong. And as a result, the answer would be none. What is the role of Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board of India? It basically registers insolvency professional agencies, insolvency professionals, information utilities, renew, withdraw, suspend or cancel such registration, specify minimum eligibility requirements for registration of insolvency professional agencies, levy fee or other charges for carrying out the purposes of this code, specify by regulation standards for the functioning of insolvency professional agencies, insolvency professionals and informational utilities carry out inspections investigation on insolvency professional agencies these are some of the role that are accommodated to the insolvency and bankruptcy board of india now let's look into the next practice question with respect to Cornwallis Code, which of the following statements is are correct? It established the permanent settlement system. Collectors were given only the power of revenue administration. Which of the statements given above is are correct? The answer to this is both 1 and 2. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Indian Express makes a reference to Cornwallis Code 
which is why we have taken this practice question. Let us try and understand what are these statements. The first statement reads, it established the permanent settlement system. Yes, it is the Convalis Code which was introduced in 1793, basically to introduce the stability in the administration. So what did it do? It brought about permanent settlement or the Zamindari system which established a revenue collection scheme and at the same time it reorganized the judiciary as well. It also felt that there has to be a clear-cut separation of powers and as a result collectors were given only the power of revenue administration and some of the magisterial powers were also stripped off as well. So basically Cornwallis wanted separation of powers and he also divested the collector of all the judicial and the magisterial powers in order to ensure that there is separation of powers. So both the statements are right. The answer to this would be both 1 and 2. Now let's look into the next practice question. What is virtual private network? It is a private computer network of an organization where the remote users can transmit encrypted information through the server of the organization. It is a computer network across a public internet that provide users access to their organization network while maintaining the security of the information transmitted. It is a computer network in which users can access a shared pool of computing resource through a service provider. None of the statements A, B and C given above is a correct description of the virtual private network. The answer to this is B which is nothing but it is a computer network across a public internet that provides users access to their organization's network while maintaining the security of information transmitted. This is what is called as virtual private network. It happens to be a previous year question from the year 2011. Now let's look into the fact of the day. The fact of the day for today's discussion is Shakti scheme. Let us try and understand what is this scheme all about and the larger repercussions on the state of the economy. The Shakti scheme is one of the initiatives taken by the Karnataka government. The Shakti scheme has been initiated whereby all the women in the state would be able to travel free of cost in the public transport. This means that they need not have to pay any charges in case they are travelling on the public transport. This has two sides to it. One is the positive side to it. It also has negative side to it. What is the positive side? If you look at the statement given by the Chief Minister of Karnataka, he goes on to say that this will empower the women. Why? Because when it comes to the free travel, these women would be able to use the facilities of the public transport. They would be able to move from one place to another. They would be able to go to work as well and ultimately they are empowered. There are many women who are not able to move from one place to another because there are restrictions on the economic front. Now that it has become free, they would be able to travel from the source to the destination and ultimately they would be empowering themselves economically as they would also be able to search for jobs as well. This is the one side of it. Then there is another side of it. The other side is with respect to the negative consequences. What are the negative consequences? What we have is the public transport and we also have is the private transport. In couple of districts in Karnataka, what we have is these private buses which also run as well. These private buses are now under tremendous losses as well. Why? Because when there is free travel that is given by the public transport, why would women want to go in the private private facilities and as a result many of these private buses are suffering right now as they are going through some huge losses. Added to it when there is free travel that is also provided irrespective of the economic conditions let's say for example there would be women who would also be able to pay for it but in this case since it is provided free irrespective of the economic background they would be traveling by the public transport and as a result cab drivers, auto drivers are also facing the severity, they are also facing the losses as well. This is another point. The third is with respect to the economics. When you look at the data, in February 2023, the Comptroller and Auditor General said that government's failure to compensate the RTCs for concession had impacted the financial position of the corporations as the accumulated loss of all four corporations stood at 4,689 crores. If you look into the present data, Assuming 41.81 lakh passengers travel per day, the cost of the Shakti scheme has been projected to about 337 crores per month. 
or more than 4000 crore per annum so it is spending a lot of money on the free travel why give the free travel if women are able to afford instead an alternative to this would be let's say for example school going children minors senior citizens soldiers and people who have been serving the society if such people are provided free service that would add value and this should not be given to all women who are economically prosperous is an alternative to it similar such compensation program and subsidy program is initiated in number of other countries as well as states but it is only for those who deserve which means to say that who cannot afford for it and not for all women who also have the capacity to buy the ticket so basically this particular program has the pros it also has the cons as well so weighing it and going towards the economic prosperity this money which has been given in the form of free travel can also be used for other alternatives like empowering the women providing the required infrastructure providing the other means to empower themselves are some of the alternatives that we can look at so basically what this article goes on to say is that Shakti scheme may have some pros Shakti scheme has more cons so the government will have to rethink in this particular backdrop so this article goes on to say that we can make use of fare free public transport which has been adopted in many countries like australia united states of america so on and so forth and only certain sections of the population like the senior citizens disabled transgenders minors people working in public service sectors can be provided such a free service says this article it is this that we have to understand with respect to this article so this is it for today thank you for watching all the best